This is the Godox TT350 external camera flash. Why have I got this? Because my Sony ZV-10, as you can see, has no flash of its own. And that's where the Godox comes in. Sitting in the just above budget range, the Godox TT350 is available in versions that fit most major camera brands, but this one in particular fits Sony cameras, and you can tell that by the S on the box and on the flash right there. This small and compact Godox flash supports TTL or through the lens auto flash that will help beginners like me get a nice introduction into the world of flash photography and make shooting even simpler in challenging environments. You're able to use this as a master and as a slave unit with other compatible Godox products, whether you want your flash away from the camera or want to work with multiple flash units thanks to its built-in wireless remote system that can support receiving and transmitting signals. Its other functions include having a high speed sync of up to one eight thousandth of a second, flash exposure compensation, multi-flash and manual flash and second curtain sync. And with a micro USB port located next to the battery compartment, you can keep up to date with the latest firmware updates from Godox. And it's not just this flash that you get in the box. You get the instructions in German, Chinese and thankfully English. A nice case that holds the flash. A mini stand for the flash if you intend to use the flash away from the camera and pair it with a Godox transmitter that is mounted to the camera instead of the flash. And finally a removable diffuser that fits nicely over the flash head like that. Looking at the flash again, thanks to its small size and weight of 200 grams, it doesn't look out of place next to the ZV-10. When attached there isn't any considerable weight difference, only the fact that the center of balance of the whole system altogether has changed. And at the bottom of the flash, you've got the hot shoe connector, which makes this one compatible with Sony cameras. And it is the only difference between all the other versions of the flash, which are compatible with other brands. There's the optical control sensor and the focus assist beam. Then you've got the flash head, which tilts between minus seven and 90 degrees backwards and forward, and then rotates 270 degrees. Although you'll get more rotation one way than you do with the other. Over the flash head, there is a hideable catch light panel for when you're taking portrait shots and you want to get a bit of reflective light into your subject's eyes. And a built-in wide panel, which flips over the flash head and acts as a mini diffuser, spreading the light a little bit more than the flash head on its own, but less than with the diffuser on. On the reverse side, there's the LCD panel and the buttons mode, zoom, sync, slave, and then the test and flash ready button, the set button and the dial, and then you've got the power button. Power in this flash on the side, opening this side panel will give you access to the battery compartment where the flash takes two AA batteries. I've got two lithium batteries, but I would recommend getting some rechargeable batteries as you could find yourself going through loads of batteries if you're using this flash a lot. Using the recommended 2500 milliamp rechargeable batteries, this flash is rated at being able to produce approximately 210 full power flashes before you need to recharge them again. Mounting the flash on your camera is easy as it fits nicely on the hot shoe mount and can be secured using the lock ring. Initially, when you turn your camera on, hoping to immediately start snapping away with the flash, you may need to enable flash or external flash devices within your camera settings. Now, if you turn on the Godox flash and it's connected to your camera correctly, then you'll see this red light, which means that you're connected and ready to flash when you press the shutter. Or if you press this button itself, then you can test the flash like this. After each flash in the manual and TTL mode, there's a recycling time of 0.1 to 2.2 seconds before you're able to take the flash again. But obviously in multi-flash mode, this differs after each burst of shots up to 90 times. I'm not gonna go too in depth in the settings, just a quick overview of the buttons. Looking at the LCD screen, it's currently in TTL mode. If you do power off the flash, it will retain the previous settings you left it with. Pressing the mode button will alternate between the TTL, manual and multi-flash modes. Within each of these modes, you can adjust the flash coverage pressing the zoom button and changing between automatically adjusting based on your camera lens's current focal length or manually choosing a focal length from 24 millimeters to 105 millimeters and even closer to 14 millimeters when the built-in wide panel is over the flash head. Useful if you're using wider angle lenses. 
The sync button turns the high speed sync on and off, allowing you to use the flash at shutter speeds up to that one eight thousandth of a second if your camera is able to do that. The slave button, which only works in manual mode when you want to use a transmitter connected to your camera. Now that we've looked at the tech specs of this flash, let's go and see what it can do. And I'll show you some of the shots I've taken with this Godox TT350S attached to my Sony ZV-10. So that's the Godox TT350S, a useful companion that's affordable, light and compact enough to fit in your camera bag, suitable enough to light up your canvas for general flash requiring situations, even if it's in a challenging environment. And it has the potential to work both on camera as most people use it, and off camera with supported accessories like softboxes, transmitters and other flashes like this one, means that having a flash like this should no longer limit you if your camera doesn't have a built-in flash, or if you find that the built-in flash doesn't give you that flexibility like the external flash like the Godox does. With its ability to tilt and rotate the flash head, there shouldn't be an angle that you want that you won't be able to get with this flash. I'm going to be using this to practice my macro photography, so let me know in the comments below what you're using your flash for, whether it's this one or another one. I'll leave the link to this in the description below. Thanks for watching, press the like button if you like this video and subscribe if you already haven't, and I'll see you in the next one.